try every year if I have the time to get away to come here. I think it's one of the most charming places in the world. And I've been fortunate that uh, for many summers I've had a chance to come for at least two weeks. Wow. Take it from Old Blue Eyes, it's a very regal edition of Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. Hi, I'm Robin Leach in Monaco, the glittering gem of the Riviera. And you've got a VIP ticket to Prince Rainier's private party. Play with all your favorite stars at the exclusive event that wowed the world and drew Hollywood's heaviest hitters to the most lavish extravaganza in the city that put the ooh in ooh la la, Monte Carlo. Fame and fortune, the final frontier. Your host is Robin Leach, who circles the globe to uncover the stories America will never stop talking about. He pioneered television comedy and got stuck with a nickname for life. Candid confessions on life, laughter, and love from Uncle Milty, plus the bedroom joke that backfired. She's got 227 reasons to live it up. Sexy Jack Hay plays Princess on the Prowl. If he ruled the world, every day would be a party. The California whiz kid who pocketed a fortune making adult toys and turned play day into payday by creating the sharper image. On the sunny, funny Riviera, Bill Cosby serves up laughs off camera for Felicia Rashad. As the champagne flows in Monte Carlo, all the superstars come out to play. When we return, lifestyle's biggest daredevil to date. Come fly with British multi-millionaire Richard Branson as he gambles his life and his fortune to break a record crossing the Atlantic. It was a journey some felt was not meant to be. Stay with us. Was she born with that hair color, or is that your doing? In salons, the talk is about Miss Clairol. Miss Clairol, the colors hairdressers choose more often than any other hair color. I could be a blonde like that. I'd do it in a minute. Miss Clairol, 27. Superb color, time after time. No wonder hairdressers trust the colors of Miss Clairol more often than any other. So for beautiful hair, gorgeous color, shouldn't you trust Miss Clairol? I'm 80 years old. And I love Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. Brave adults are coming forward to challenge the notion that Frosted Flakes is just a kid's cereal. I eat them, I love them, and I don't care who knows. With that extra crunch in milk, that frosting just right, they have a taste adults can love every bit as much as kids. Go ahead, Shirley, you can do it. I love them, thank you. <laughs> what more can you say? Frosted Flakes have the taste adults have grown to love. They're great! I want something round and crisp and buttery tasty. When I want a cracker, I want a Ritz. Golden Buttery Ritz Crackers. They're delicious anytime. When you want a cracker, you want a Ritz. Thanks, son. Oh, 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 who's that kid with the Oreo cookie licking up the creamy middle like she did when she was little? It's hard to hide the kid inside when you're crunching O-R-E-O. The League of Feminine Felines presents The Great Debate. What's to debate? I'm finicky, he's not. I suggest there is no difference in cat food. Take this brand. Please do. Seafood surprise. Seafood? <laughs> Wait till he looks inside. Sort of looks like seafood. Surprise. Now Nine Lives Fisherman Stew. What looks like nutritious stew with real delicious fish. I... I... I rest my case. Vote Nine Lives. A more satisfying choice. stories we have presented on Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous have had as great a potential for tragedy as this one. It's about a gambler, a man who risked his life savings to open a chain of discount stores, who then gambled the success of that venture to start a record business, only to turn around and bet it all on an airline. Today, he's worth nearly half a billion dollars. He has one thing left to gamble, his life. 
I think your first solo flight in anything is um, um, a mixture of something which is a bit magnificent and a bit awe-inspiring. Those were the thoughts of Richard Branson on the eve of an adventure that almost killed him and his partner, Pearl Lindstrand. The duo sought to become the first men to cross the Atlantic in a hot air balloon, a distance of 3,400 miles. Six unsuccessful attempts had been made by other daredevils. The cost, five men dead. Though a helium-filled balloon actually made the crossing, Sinex doubted a hot air balloon could. Even Branson was uneasy about his chances. And I've got, you know, a wonderful team of people around me and uh, lovely family, lovely children, and, um, and uh, anyway, something which I, <laughs> I don't really want to think about at this stage. <laughs> Branson had everything to lose. In addition to his loving family, the whiz kid mogul heads a half-billion-dollar empire that includes Virgin Records, Virgin Airways, and, appropriately, a paradise vacation island in the Virgin Islands. Astonishingly, the atypical tycoon runs the 128 company operation from a houseboat. Given health, wealth and happiness, why run the risk of losing it all to the Grim Reaper with such airbrained daring do? In life, unless you actually um, try things, I think you've, you've so often failed before, anyway. And, um, and I think that if everybody um, were, were worried about you know, getting red faces, nobody, nobody would try anything. And, barriers would not be pushed forward. Mild-mannered Branson is used to pushing his luck. In 1984, he went foot to the floor attempting to break the world's speed record for crossing the Atlantic by boat, and nearly drowned when his super-powered speed machine sank just 100 miles short of its destination. Stirred but not shaken, he was back the next year with victory, pounding over the waves from New York to England in three days, 18 hours and 31 minutes. How ironic that the owner of a fleet of luxury jumbos will do almost anything to cross the Atlantic without a plane. The cost of the hot air balloon caper, one million dollars one way. See, it is true about mad dogs and Englishmen going out in the midday sun. Because of its size, the one-of-a-kind balloon could not be tested before the flight. Either it would work or it wouldn't. The unique design used solar power by day and propane by night. The balloon had to carry 10 tons of fuel and fly at 30,000 feet. So their capsule had to be pressured to withstand temperature swings from 50 degrees below zero to 50 above. It also had to float. <laughs> 